but um, so in this example, guys, there's a couple things we want to first thing we want to know. First of all, we always we need to remember this. And if you guys remember the beginning of the year, I told you you guys need to know these basic trigonometric functions, right? We got to know the basic trigonometric functions so we can apply the transformations. Because if you don't know what the parent graph looks like, it's kind of hard to really like envision um, what the other graphs look like, especially if you're looking at your phone and not looking up here. So here is the reciprocal function, which I wrote over there, but I'll wrote right over here again. So now we got to kind of see, well, what's happening with this graph? What is when we subtract a 3 in the denominator, what is that doing compared to adding a 1 outside of the fraction, right? And that is our basic uh, battle between the h and the k's. If you remember, h was inside of the function, k was outside of the function. I think you guys can agree that the function is 1 over x, so therefore the minus 3 is inside of the function, and the 1 is outside of the function. Now, this isn't what I asked, but I'm just going to write it in here. You are shifting the graph right 3 units. Sometimes I write this down just to make sure I'm like doing this correctly. And then I can say up 1 unit. All right. Now that's going to be helpful because if I look at this graph, is the graph, like first of all, is the graph crossing the x or y axis at all? This graph? No. But I do kind of know if I start moving this up and over to the right, I'm going to, have, I'm going to start having some intercepts, right? I mean, it's going to be, now it's going to be possible. Also, the other thing is my asymptotes. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. If I shift the graph 3 units to the right, my asymptote is just shifted 3 units to the right, correct? So just by having a basic understanding, I don't really need to do any math, but I can easily say that the vertical asymptote is at x equals 3. Because it was at 0, but it got shifted 3 units to the right, so there it is. Horizontal asymptote was at 0, now it got shifted 1 unit, so therefore that is y equals 1. Just make sure your vertical asymptote, guys, remember has the x values, because it's vertical lines, horizontal is the y's. Um, let's go ahead and go to domain and range here first, and then I'll get to the x and y intercepts, because that's something new we haven't really talked about in a while. So the domain is all real numbers except for where the asymptote occurs, right? That's the undefined value. Would you guys agree? And wouldn't you guys agree that 3 is undefined in this function? If I plug in a 3, then I'm going to have 0 in the denominator. So by using interval notation, I can just write this as negative infinity to 3. Union 3 to infinity. Man, thankfully we did all that practice last class period, right? That's a little bit easier than what we did. The range is going to be the set of all y values. Now I could try to figure out what this graph looks like, but again, I, I kind of have an idea. If all I'm doing is shifting this graph up one unit, then my range is going to be all real numbers except where the graph approaches. Because you guys can see it doesn't, it doesn't cross this horizontal asymptote. So that is going to be at negative infinity 1 union 1 to infinity. All right, so now I am just going to do a rough sketch. Now, how would you sketch this? Because there's really not too many points. Well, you guys can think about the, the intersection of your asymptotes. If you shift this right three units and up one, that's kind of like my new intersection of asymptotes. So I have asymptotes here, an asymptote there, and then the graph looks something like that. Now, the reason why I wanted to sketch that is, OK, I'm seeing that my x and y intercepts are both positive values. So if I get something that's not a positive value for an x and y intercept, I know that I kind of did something wrong. And again, this is just a rough sketch. I'm not trying to be you know, perfect here. I just want to get a general idea of where these asymptotes should occur. So does anybody remember when the x-intercept occurs? We did talk about this. x-intercept occurs when? y equals 0. Always. doesn't matter what function you're talking about. Why is that the case? Because again, here's the y-axis. We're looking for when it crosses the x-axis. That means the y value, like think of this as a number line, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 2, 3. We're looking for when y is 0. right? We're looking for when it's there. So all I'm going to do, guys, again, you could think of the f of x as a y, like if you're thinking about this as a coordinate point. So let's just plug 0 in for that, 0 equals 1 over x minus 3 plus 1. And now, guys, it just comes into using inverse operations. Please be careful. Do not undo the x minus 3 until you've gotten rid of the subtraction or the adding, th adding 1. So I'm going to subtract the 1 on both sides. Um, I don't have a little bit more work. Let's see. So I have negative 1 equals 1 over x minus 3. Crap, I have a, I have a uh, a variable in the denominator. Does everyone remember what I should do there? I'll get rid of that. Should I? 
Mm, variable in the denominator. Uh, anybody remember? Yeah, you can just, yeah, just multiply by x minus 3 on both sides. <coughs> now be careful, that is a negative 1. So if I apply a distributive property, I'll have a negative x plus 3 equals 1. Minus 3 minus 3, negative x equals 1 minus 3 is negative 2. x equals 2. And does that kind of make sense? I mean, obviously my graph is not perfect, but maybe I should have done something like this. <laughs> right? But that kind of works. Yes? OK. So if the x-intercept occurs when y equals 0, then I can say the y-intercept is going to occur when x equals 0. And that is just going to be the theme for you guys to remember today. y-intercept is when x equals 0. Again, because the x number line, this one, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 2, 3, we're looking for when it's at 0 on the y-axis. So all you guys got to do is just plug in 0. 1 over 0 minus 3 plus 1. Well, if this is going to have a denominator of 3, and again, guys, remember that negative can go up front. It doesn't matter if it's negative 4 over 2 or 4 over negative 2. Or you just put the negative in front. Those fractions are all the same. So don't get stuck because a negative is in the denominator. Put it in front or put up top. Put it in front. So therefore, I can rewrite this as y equals negative 1 third plus 1, or a better number would be 3 over 3. Yes, right? Just want to make our fraction life easy. y equals 2 thirds. So let's see, x-intercept is x equals 2. Or we could use the coordinate point 2 comma 0. And the y-intercept is y equals 2 thirds. Or the coordinate point 0 comma 2 thirds. Yes? All right.